Hello Booktube. I thought I'd do something a little different today. Um, I'm a director of a small public library, um, a rural library, so um, I order the books we get and um, as a book collector myself and a read, heavy reader, I, I purchase books for myself and uh, Obviously, like many people, I purchase books as gifts. So, there's a lot of thought, usually. Uh, unless I'm grabbing something on a whim, just in case, you know, it ends up being good. But a lot of times, there's a lot of thought. So, I spend a lot of my week actually researching what's coming up. And I do that in a multiple of ways. So, I'm going to try to do this without making everybody dizzy. So, I'm going to pan the camera around a little bit and show you my workbench for for uh, the materials I used or use to um, research new books and old. Um, I think I would uh, start by saying I also use BookTube to do this. And this is why I watched BookTube to start with. Um, there's several book reviewers um, that I trust, that I watch regularly. Um, Steve Donahue would probably be the most used for my professional library, for the public library. Um, and some of his uh, bookshelf tours have made me look for things that I wanted for my personal library. I also use a newsletter that's put out by McBooks Press. Um, it's nautical and historical fiction, heavily nautical fiction. I used the, and use the Times Literary Supplement, uh, the New York Review of Books, the New York Times Book Review, and the London Review of Books. So I'm going to bring a few of those items over, and we'll take a look at them, and I'll, see, I'll show you how I use them. So the first I'm going to start with is the quarter deck. Excuse me, I can't read with my glasses. Um, it's a newsletter put out by McBooks Press. Um, quarter deck. Celebrating historical maritime literature and art. And sadly enough, the cover on this one is Douglas Raymond, 1924 to 2017. So the, it usually starts off with a section called Scuttlebutt, which is pretty much little new snippets. Um, has new book launches. Um, over here. Here's a non-fiction book, and then right next to it, Julian Stockman's newest fiction release. Um, the Scuttlebutt has McBooks Press opens new historical fiction online ebook and audiobook store. Um, the uh, editorial is usually uh, by a fella. And it's always uh, that that owns. Um, I believe he owns it, or he's at least the editor, George Jepson. Let me see. Maybe it'll say on the masthead. So uh, George D. Jepson is the um, editor and managing director of the quarter deck. And uh, Amy A. Jepson is the operations director. And uh, McBooks Press Quarter Deck is distributed by McBooks, uh, McBooks Press Incorporated. Uh, and their publisher is Alexander Scott. So, um, so by George is like the editorial. I mean, they, he does it every time the newsletter comes out. It can be a little irregular. But, and so it's a discussion of Riemann. 
And then right across from it um, is an article about one of the authors in their stable of authors. In this case, it would be the famous fiction writer and historian, James L. Nelson, a um, fellow from Maine. He's written some great history. Uh, um, I think uh, Washington's Navy, uh, think about Benedict Arnold. There's a lot of these um, set in uh, Ireland fiction. We did a great series, which we'll, when we do a book tour downstairs, well, yeah, here they are. Um, they're a Revolutionary War books, and I have quite a few of those. Really, really enjoyed them. Here's a um, article by Kathy, Kathy, excuse me, Stockwin. She's a wife of Julian Stockman who writes the Kid Adventures, Sea Adventures. And this particular one's titled Captain Thomas Kidd, The Other Man in My Life. Th those are consistently good quality. Here's the... So I, I print these out basically. Um, I go through them pretty detail. Here's the author Seth Hunter. Some of his books. Um, so I, I, I get a lot out of these. Um, so as you can tell, I'll show you. This, this is the printout of them that I've done over the years. I keep them. I mean, they're online. You don't need to keep them. Um, I'll try to provide a link so that you can get them if you so desire. Another resource I use is the New York Times Book Review. Here's an example of a recent one. What was this? Uh, June of 2017. Uh, they're heavy on ads. Ladies John Grisham, Camino Island. Gives you available Tuesday, June 6th. And this is important because these bestsellers, um, whether they're in a genre or something like that that I'm interested in or not, and I'm interested in just about everything, so it's usually not an issue. Um, my patrons know about these books coming out. They read the paper. So uh, it helps me grab the, at least a part of the bestseller list. Um, because we're a small library, I can't grab everything. And if I, if I did, we'd soon run out of space, I can assure you. So here, a little chart for summer reading. Um, a lot, a lot of ads. Which, is, again, I say is good. But I do read the reviews, too. I like the buy the book section. Here is with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They ask these series of questions. Uh, whom would you want to write your life story? What's the best book you ever received as a gift? What book might people be surprised to find on your shelves? I find it pretty interesting. They get a, they get a good cross-section of people to do these things. Um... Alexander McCall Smith. So they, I find this very helpful. So in the back, you, they have several lists, like combined print and ebook bestsellers. And then down, and down below, they'll have the staff picks. Might give you an idea for something. Uh, print hardcover bestsellers. Now, actually, a lot of times, to check these off with a pen, I don't keep these the... Uh, I get piles of them going sometimes. So middle grade hardcover, young adult hardcover picture books and series. Right there. Um, so, uh, so here in the back they have a short list. In this case it's focused on Bob Dylan. And this guy's all the rage at my library right now. So big, big to do right there. So that's one of the, the standards. I, I use this every week. It comes out every week, uh, Sunday. So uh, very useful. The other resource I use is this library journal. Um, a lot of short reviews, pretty trustworthy. So there'll be the reviews list. 
And this time around, it, it switches up. They'll have audio reviews, video reviews, games, gamers, and gaming. Uh, pre pre publication book alert. Um, this issue they have science fiction and fantasy. Uh, they have erotica, fiction, arts and humanities, social science, science technology, the readers show, library reads, and LJ Library Journal bestsellers. Um, and and the categories can change. A little bit depending on what issue it is so um, I think this is just about every month let's see I'll show you a page here so there's a science fiction and fantasy page so they have a, a summing up in the beginning so then there's a section called check these out um, a debut of the month down here by my thing. Uh, quotable. Where they quote a piece of text from one of the volumes. Is a way to show you what's going on. Um, Dover Thrift Publications has a little ad in the back. They have a bestseller list in the back. This one, number one in fiction, The Underground Railroad, Colson Whitehead. Uh, non-fiction, uh, Hillbilly Elegy, which I can't keep in my library. Uh, add on the back. So my next resource um, is the Times Literary Supplement. It's a British publication. Um, of the big three, I use the New York Review of Books, the London Review, and the Times Literary Supplement. I usually only have subscriptions going to two at a time. I mean, they can get a little pricey. Um, and, and they do cover a lot of the same ground, but not exactly. And um, right now, uh, the TLS is the one that I'm not getting. Yeah, I'm getting the London Review. I'll end up switching that around pretty soon. So give you an example um i like the table of contents i like to know who's reviewing some of these names i've gotten to know over the years um, they give uh let's see a little editorial piece here literature and criticism uh criticism all the world's a page nationalism creolization emptiness and the persistent rise of world literature that's quite a topic there um, they also, uh, well, here's a picture of W.H. Auden. Let's see, so they have the art section. All about the Benjamin by Benjamin Franklin. Natural science, in this case about parks. Uh, in brief, so that can be interesting. So here we have French fiction, memoirs, art, Russian poetry, religion, Spanish fiction, biography, clowns. <laughs> uh, a little ad section in the back. Uh, Some Edward Lear. That's pretty neat. Got a crossword puzzle. I don't know if I've ever done a crossword puzzle. Um, so here, let's do this one. Uh, cross a TLS crossword 1126 by Mertillus. I'm not, I may not be pronouncing that right. So number one across, a Dean Koontz book cover with a characteristic style. Five is a god's love returned by a goddess. So let's try some down clues. Uh, what upset an island queen? Ring of bright water. Writer sounds wet. And why a ham can't get the sack in this Shakespeare love story. I don't think I do very well. Even in the back here, it was poetic invention. So it's very... You, I, I really enjoy this one. So next we have the London Review of Books. In this case, it's a 15 June 2017 issue, uh, which I have not read yet. So this will be as much fun for me. 
again, ads for books, which I, I love looking through. New from the University of Toronto Press. Um, table of contents. I enjoy the little bios of the uh, authors on the bottom. And they're, they're not bios, but little brief explanations. Uh, so, Inigo Jones is finishing a book about the art dealer and spy Tomas Harris. Uh, James Wood's novel Upstate is due in May next year. Michael Wood's On Empson is out now. Claire Bucknell is a fellow at, uh, of All Souls College, Oxford. Ian Jack, editor of The Independent on Sunday in his glory days, writes for The Guardian. So, you have letters. They can be fun. They can be boring. When something heated or controversial gets going, I don't miss it. It's fun. Um, so, uh, so, Cramming for Success by James Wood. And it's about uh, Mark Ford's Thomas Hardy, Half a Londoner, uh, which I have not read. Um, University of Chicago Press ad. Let's see. Uh, University Press Week. So there's a page after page of University Press releases. Um, Art at the Palace Museum. We have ads in the back. Um, I love the personals. I, I don't know if they're better in here or in the New York Review of Books, but they could be great. Um, Bookshops. Uh, Getty Conservation. It shows a person restoring some particular painting. And finally here, um, the New York Review of Books. Okay, this is the... Um, June 22nd, 2017 issue. And this one is also University Press issue. So, uh, you see there, they give a little more detail about the contributors. Let's find somebody here. Julian Bell is a painter and writer. His latest book on painting sequence of Genesis. Tim Flannery's books include uh, Chasing Kangaroos, A Continent, Scientists, and a search for the world's most extraordinary creature. Uh, Michael Gore's books include Portrait of a Novel, Henry James and the Making of American Masterpiece, and Bells in Their Silence, Travels Through Germany. He teaches English at Smith. Again, ads. New from Oxford. Always fun to look at. Um, and showing the new Oxford Shakespeare. The Getty. So we've got this from the Getty. Some of their books. Um, John Hopkins. Stanford University Press. McGill Queens University. Uh, so here we have an article by Melise Rootsman, The Islamic Road to the Modern World. Let's see what volumes he's looking at. The Islamic Enlightenment, The Struggle Between Faith and Reason, 1798 to Modern Times by Kish, uh, Christopher de Bellage. I'm not pronouncing that right. Freedom in the Arab World, Concepts and Ideologies in Arabic Thought in the, uh, in the 19th Century by Wau Abu Uqsa, Cambridge University Press. Uh, this first one was never right. Uh, you know, <clears throat> read the review and see if there's uh, something you might, might be interested in. Edge of Irony. 
Modernism in the Shadow of the Habsburg Empire. And then they have a cartoon here with uh, Joseph Roth, Carl Krauss, Elias Canetti, and Robert Musil. So, uh, University of California Press. So, it's, you know, you don't usually see that much of the print. You know, it's, it's university press issue, so it's going to be. A little bit of poetry here. Voice for the Voiceless. The Last ship, uh, Shift by Philip Levine. My Lost Poets, A Life in Poetry by Philip Levine. And The Bread of Time, Toward an Autobiography from Philip Levine. Yeah. So, here we have that. What else we got on my Found in Translation, Beyond Greek, The Beginnings of Latin Literature by Dennis Feeney, Harvard University Press. <clears throat> then at the end, they've got their ads and all that. Um, again, I don't know if they don't do it as much as they used to. Personals. I, I get a kick out of these things. Um... 19th century woman, lyrical, sensitive, aware, loves beauty and grace in all its many forms, seeks gentlemen of honor and elegance to share with, uh, in the joys and pleasures of life. This is so sweet. <laughs> woman, France-based, Con uh, conversation exchange, English, French, English not perfect, 50 plus, preference, Europe. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, they have um, vacation rentals, Paris, luxurious, large, sun-filled, bell -ep epic uh, apartment. Uh, so. France, Italy, border, romantic, spacious garden, flat, breathtaking, uninterrupted, Mediterranean views. Sounds nice. Then on the back here is University of Toronto Press. So, um, yeah, the, the entertainment, uh, way to look at books that maybe you're not going to normally see at your local bookseller being promoted. I mean, I go to the Dartmouth bookstore up here a lot, so I do see, I see these volumes. I also see the popular stuff. Um, I have to be cognizant of both, uh, more because we are a public library of the popular stuff as, as opposed to some of the academic. But like any community, we have a mix. So uh, we try to provide food for all kinds of appetites and uh, within our limited means. But um, like I say, uh, some of this stuff helps with my own collecting. And uh, I use other sources, but, but these are the primary ones. So thank you, BookTube.